a little bit about finding a way home this Christmas. Christmas is a time when we want to be at home if we live away. It's a time for being with family. I remember Christmases through the years. I got a bike in 1981, the year that it snowed on Christmas Day, and I pedaled it in the hallway. We bought a sledge for my kids one Christmas. The winter, we had no snow whatsoever. (laughs) Christmas 1987 was a great one. Uh, Show you some pictures. I was nearly 17. There you go, some pictures. I was 18, enjoying being an almost grown-up. You see me in the top? I was home with my family. I had my new Pringle golf jumper on, like my hero, Nick Faldo. Yeah, anyway, less said the better. So you had some other photos of my family in 1987, Christmas in 1987. And here's, here's my family now. This is our homes we've had. See my three children, children child one, child two, and child three. Uh, and then my wife, wife one. Um, <laughs> I'm not allowed to use names because of uh, protection. Um, so uh, we need to do that. Anyway. A survey I found recently voted Chris Rear's song that we've just heard, Driving Home for Christmas, was the favorite Christmas song to play, wait for it, while driving home. (laughs) Can you believe it? And I think there was another survey that took, and they said, the favorite song to sing while it was snowing, can you guess what that is? Oh, yes, that's right. Dreaming of a white Christmas. In fact, some 92% of respondents from this survey, despite, despite traffic jams and potential bad weather just like we've had, there is no better feeling than driving home for the seasonal break. So Christmas is a time for family, for homes. Anyway, back to Chris Rear. He wrote this song first in 1978, 10 years before it was released. And this is the story behind it. He needed to get home from, to Middlesbrough from London's Abbey Road Studios. His wife had come down to drive him home in their Austin Mini to save money because the company he was working for wouldn't pay his rail ticket. While stuck in heavy traffic and snow falling down, Chris started looking at the other drivers who all looked so miserable. He said jokingly, and I started singing, we're driving home for Christmas. Then whenever the street lights shone in the car, he started writing the li- lyrics. In 1988, anyone know what number in the charts driving home for Christmas reached? Anyone want to guess? No, it reached number, it was a great hit, number 53. But it has become more popular since, obviously. Anyway, so let me just remind you of some of those lyrics. I'm driving home for Christmas. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm moving down that line. And it's been so long, but I will be there. And I'll sing this song to pass the time. So I sing for you, he says. Although you can't hear me. Driving in my car, I'm driving home for Christmas. Great, isn't it? I can't wait to see those faces. I've got red lights on the run. So, why is Christmas so, why is home so important to us? Why did Jesus come and make his home with us? And what future home do we have in store? I want to read some verses, but I also want to use Chris Rear's song to help us. So why is home so important to us? Chris Rear sings, oh, I can't wait to see those faces. I think as children, we don't always appreciate home. And some of you may have a good reason not to appreciate your home. We don't want to go live, we want to, don't want to go live, relive those memories. But home should be a place where the people you love are, the people you care about, Your closest relations. Home, it is defined in the dictionary, is a place where one lives. 
or the ground of a sports team, the own ground of a sports team. It should be a place of safety and warmth. Again, it's not always true, certainly in the current situation. Home should be a place that is familiar and feels familiar. A place that you can be yourself. So why did Jesus come and make his home with us? This is what it says in John 1 verse 14. The word, that's Jesus, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Or he made his home with us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. So why did he come? Well, he didn't come just to see those faces. The Bible says he came to save and take you to a new home. John 1 verse 9 says, The true light has come into the world. Give, with, c- the true light gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, though the world was made through him, it did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. He came to his own, he came home. The people that he had been part of creation. He came as a light. He came to enable and to restore the relationship with God. We've made a mess often of our lives. A bit like Chris Rea. It's going to take some time, it feels like, to sort it out. And everything seems to be against us. The snow is stopping us getting home. You might even want to turn back because of the risk. But there is a risk in believing in God. It's called faith. We can feel that we're top to toe in tailbacks. But there are other things getting in the way. Life is full of distractions, busyness. We don't get round to putting those relationships right, going, getting round to the things that we intended to do. Speaking to God, putting our lives right with God. Perhaps you think we'll just do it another day when things are slower, things are easier. Oh, and then Chris Rea says, I get, there's red lights on the run. And there's a big red light on our journey and it's called sin. It stops us in our tracks, getting anywhere near God. But Jesus dealt with those, that red light as well. He's made it a green light. It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, that you can go through on green. So what's the future, that home that Jesus has made for us? Going back to Chris Rear, he said, his hope that soon there'll be a freeway. Jesus has got us on the freeway. All you have to do is believe. Believe who he is, believe what he has done, and accept him as Lord and Savior. And then Chris Rear says, wants to get his feet, get my feet on holy ground. Arriving home for Chris Rear is his destination. He considers it holy. He considers it a perfect place. But there's really, real holy ground for you to be welcomed into. We can know a relationship with God now and feel at home. But there's also eternal home that Jesus has gone to prepare. It says in John 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. And then the disciples asked, well, where, where is it? Where are you going? We don't know where you're going, Jesus. And this is how he answers them. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to come home this Christmas, find your way home, then 
You need to look to Jesus. Follow the way he guides. Follow his lead. Make him your Lord and Savior this Christmas time. He has removed all the tailbacks. He has turned all the red lights to green. He's got a freeway for you to drive on and put your feet on holy ground. He's gone to prepare a place for you. If only you'd receive. Ask him and he'll lead you to it. Amen.